Presentations will contain forward-looking statements which are subject to risks and changes in circumstances. You can look at Boeing's Form 10-K for important information about these statements. Additionally, during the filming of this video, COVID-19 safety measures were implemented to protect the health and safety of participants, including proper social distancing and face covering use by all except on-camera presenters. Aviation is an important driver of the global economy, too integral to people's drive to explore and connect on a personal level across all continents. So all things considered, we expect 2021 to be another year of challenge for our entire industry. Yet, multiple opportunities will exist in aviation finance as the recovery begins. Twenty twenty was a year unlike any other in our industry and our communities. As COVID nineteen continues to run its course, we hope you are staying safe and healthy. Like many of you, we're working differently this year. The current aircraft finance market outlook, or what many of you referred to as CAFMO, is back. It's being published the first time since twenty nineteen, but also the first time we've ever delivered it virtually. You'll continue to see the many insightful comments that you've come to expect from Boeing Capital. Overall, you'll see that the aircraft market continues to remain very resilient. As we've seen in the past, crisis after crisis, the industry comes back and is even stronger. And you'll see in many pockets where there's growth and ample liquidity within the tire space. Another positive note is that the capital continues to flow into the aircraft finance sector all throughout the pandemic, continuing to underscore the positive nature of the investor confidence in the sector. Importantly, we forecast that there's ample liquidity for our customers in 2021, with the historical low cost of capital to continue into the near term. With these elements as a foundation, we expect 2021 to be a year of ample liquidity and capital for our customers and the entire industry. 2020 was a year like we've never seen in commercial aviation as airlines, manufacturers, and the world adjusted to the COVID-19 pandemic. This resulted in airlines taking less delivery of new aircraft. Aircraft financing requirements for 2020 were $59 billion, down more than 50% from the previous peak in 2018 and similar to levels we saw in 2010. However, there are reasons to be optimistic as we come out of this. We're in the beginnings of an economic recovery. We've seen vaccines developed, tested, and rolled out in record time. We also see airlines focusing more on making sure they have the most efficient operations that they can. And consumers are more focused now than ever before on decisions they make and the environment. In fact, two thirds of Boeing deliveries over the next 10 years will go towards replacing old technology aircraft with new technology. When we look at how customers paid for their Boeing deliveries, 2020 was fairly similar to what we saw in 2019, with cash, bank debt, and capital markets being the three major sources. We also saw credit enhanced stay stable at 4% and export credit increased to just under 3%. But I think the big takeaway is that despite the challenges we had in 2020, 
Boeing did not have to finance any of our aircraft deliveries. And this just speaks to the products we deliver and the financier's appetite for those efficient products. When we look at funding requirements, really it's a product of where aircraft are delivered and what type of aircraft are delivered. In 2020, not surprisingly, North America was over 50% of Boeing's funding requirements. And this makes sense when you think about it because we went through a period of unprecedented travel restrictions and also North America was the first to unground the MAX. Funding varies depending on the region. In North America during 2020, we saw a pretty balanced approach with capital markets, cash, and sale leasebacks, the three predominant sources of aircraft financing. Now the interesting part here is that historically, we've seen the sale leaseback market play a smaller role in North America, but 2020 was an opportunity for airlines to diversify, and we saw lessors step in and, and fill this niche. This allowed them to work with new airline credits and really build their book of business. In Asia Pacific, we saw over 80% of all deliveries were financed by bank debt. And this really speaks to the regional banks stepping up and providing financing to their home market airlines. The Middle East and China, over half of all deliveries were paid for with cash. Europe was probably the most diversified of all markets using credit enhanced, export credit, cash, capital markets, and bank debt. And then Latin America, we had one delivery, and this delivery was supported by export credit. We came into 2020 with a very healthy financing environment. There was abundant liquidity, and cost capital was very cheap for airlines and lessors. Now that changed as the full implications of the pandemic were realized by the world. We saw lessors begin focusing on restructuring activity and deferral requests from airlines. We saw banks reevaluating their exposure to our section. Uh, we saw the capital markets during the first part of the year were pretty much frozen. The tax equity market, which is historically a little bit more risk averse, retreated as well. However, during the second part of the year, as clear signs that we were in the beginning of a recovery became apparent to the world, we saw these markets begin to open back up. In fact, we've seen new leasing platforms come to market, and we've seen increased interest from institutional investors. Now we will talk more about the sub-segments of aircraft financing. Aircraft leasing has really become a critical part of aviation finance. Back in 1980, only 538 aircraft were owned by lessors. When you look at it today, just under 13,000 aircraft are owned by lessors. That's an 8% annual average growth rate over 40 years, which is pretty phenomenal and speaks to the value that lessors provide customers in this market. Another way to look at this is at the total installed fleet. 46% of all aircraft are owned today by lessors. Even with the challenges we saw in 2020, the leasing share of owned aircraft grew by 3% to 46% of all aircraft. Now, how did they do this? They really did this by sale leaseback transactions on already delivered aircraft. We saw this space grow by over 130% for single aisle aircraft in 2020. Similarly, we saw this space increase by 40% in wide body aircraft. Capital markets were a very busy segment of aircraft finance during 2020. We saw new issuances of over $120 billion, a 70% increase over the previous year. And this is really remarkable when you consider that during the first and second quarter of 2020, capital markets were almost frozen. But airlines came up with new innovative and creative structures and investors were there to support those new products. And I think it's also important to note that over $120 billion in financing for airlines, 
This went to really support airlines operations during the pandemic. There were some changes in the capital markets in 2020 compared to what we've seen in recent history. For example, lessors went from being the largest issuers in capital markets to in 2020, they were the smallest. We saw the ABS market pause during the year. US airlines issued more of everything, but were predominantly active in the secured market where they had innovative and creative structures. Non-US airlines were very active in the equity market. We also saw a re-emergence of convertible and equity link structures come back with greater size with airlines across the world. Now let's take a look at commercial banks. Banks played a critical role early in the pandemic as airlines across the world drew down on their credit facilities and established new ones. This gave airlines the cushion that they needed to survive during this challenging period. When we look at the distribution of bank debt for Boeing deliveries, North America was the largest market at 35%, followed by Asia Pacific at 30%. Now I will say that we have seen bank debt activity slow down during the second half of 2020, but we do expect this market to come back strong once the economic recovery takes full swing. Now let's talk about export credit. As a global company, Boeing works with export credit agencies throughout the world. We think it's important to provide our customers diversification and options. Now historically, during financially challenging times, we've seen export credit agencies play a critical role. We saw less export credit activity in 2020 than we have during previous challenging times. However, the majority of transactions took place during the second half of the year, and there is a robust pipeline of deals. So we expect export credit agencies to play a critical role as we come out of this recovery. Now let's talk about credit enhanced. Since inception in 2017, we have seen this space finance over $5.5 billion in Boeing deliveries. It's truly remarkable. The product has now been tried and tested in the market and acted the way it was intended to. We see new innovation and new players coming into this space, and it's gonna to continue to evolve and be important as we move forward. We believe that the investment thesis behind aviation remains intact. First of all, traffic will return to pre-pandemic levels. We have seen this happen time and time again. There's nothing that beats seeing people face to face, seeing family, having meetings, going to new vacation spots. There is a lot of pent up demand in the market and we know that the travelers will come back. Second, aircraft have long product life cycles and high barriers to entry. This allows investors a long time period to recoup their investment and earn returns. Third, there's a well-established and mature legal framework that has presence and has proven to work in the past. Thank you for your time today. We appreciate you watching this video. Please take advantage of the materials on our website. And finally, and most importantly, thank you for everything you do to bring aviation to the world.